Hello everybody, so here is Lena Delir again and I'm here to talk to you about ENFJ versus ENFP. Um, these two types in socionics are defined quasi-identical and that's because the external representation that we see, the behaviors outside, look in some way similar. But the functions are completely different and uh, they actually share no functions. And therefore, uh, we're going now to see what the differences between these two types are. Uh, first things first, uh, ENFJs. ENFJs are FE dominant. So F X they have extroverted feeling, introverted intuition, extroverted sensing, introverted uh, introverted thinking. Um, whereas uh, ENFPs are extroverted intuition dominant, uh, which means they are extroverted intuition, introverted feeling, extroverted thinking, introverted uh, sensing. Sorry, tonight I'm going a little bit slow. Uh, so, the first thing that these two types have in common and that can cause confusion is uh, that uh, they are both uh, types that have difficulties in the area of introverted thinking. In socionics, we say that uh, ENFPs are uh, introverted thinking vulnerable, which means that they uh, do not understand the importance of introverted thinking and they have difficulties apply, applying introverted thinking. Whereas ENFJs are uh, introverted thinking seeking which means uh, uh, that unlike uh, like, uh, like ENFPs, uh, they have difficulties in the area of introverted thinking and they uh, have difficulties applying introverted thinking. And it's also subconscious, a subconscious function for them. Uh, but differently uh, from ENFPs, they actually understand the importance of introverted thinking and they are called the intuitionics introverted thinking seeking. Uh, which means that uh, they want someone else to use interest thinking for them and to apply interest thinking for them. And that's because they have uh, a lot of difficulties accessing interest thinking. Um, they can apply it to an extent and they would want to be good at it, but at the same time they cannot use it. Uh, the vulnerable function, a parenthesis, the vulnerable function and the dual seeking function or inferior function in socionics are defined one dimensional functions. It means that our functions that in the case of the vulnerable functions function we cannot develop it at all. Whereas the dual seeking function or inferior function can to an extent be improved. But only to an extent. It will always remain a one dimensional function. So basically a function with a very, very weak function. In MBTI, to, uh, we can say that the inferior function is uh, uh, our um, weakest function and as far as we can develop it, it's always going to be uh, the weakest function. So, back to our two uh, types, back to ENFP and ENFJ. Let's start from ENFJ. ENFJs are extroverted feeling. They have extroverted feeling as their dominant function and that makes them basically being extroverted feeling. What does it mean? It means that if you think you're an ENFJ, you likely are not. Chances that you are an ENFJ, if you think you are an ENFJ, are equal to 0.1%. It's really unlikely that an ENFJ will come up with their true type. And the reason why an ENFJ has such difficulties coming up with their true type is actually that they are extroverted feeling. Extroverted feeling is a function that absorbs everybody else's emotions, everybody else's ideals, everybody else's, everybody else's um, moods, and it absorbs the external environment from an emotional point of view. And being ENFJ's emotional creatures, they become the external environment. 
Therefore, ENFJs, real ENFJs, will always, if very often, if, if not always, be mistyped. You will find out there some ENFJs that are correctly typed. They probably and very likely received external help into that because on their own they have a lot of difficulties figuring out who they truly are. So this is one of the characteristics of extroverted feeling. Extroverted feeling absorbs the external environment and becomes the external environment. So basically, if you have an ENFJ working uh, in, a, in a company uh, where the boss is uh, uh, an ISTJ, they will likely mold themselves into becoming an ENFP or something very, very similar to an ENFP. If, uh, if, an, if an ENFJ is required to uh, become, to be, uh, the best mother, they're going to be, uh, they're going to impersonate or to embody uh, the perfect ideal of mother, which means they're going to look like an ESFJ probably or an ISFJ, even though they are interest sensing vulnerable. And this is another, another area of overlapping with ENFPs. Uh, because ENFPs are instead interest sensing, dual seeking, or inferior, which means that ENFJs uh, do not understand the importance of personal physical sensation, have zero attention to details, and do not understand the importance of attention to details, and uh, uh, they they have uh, no sense of how to keep a house or how to. Uh, how to use interest sensing in general, how to, how to relax also. ENFJs are a very extremely active type uh, because they have this interest sensing vulnerable that makes them uh, incapable of relaxing. Whereas ENFPs, on the other hand, are also weak in these areas, but at the same time, they seek someone or they need someone to take care of these areas for them. And they are aware they do. They basically look for someone like that. If an, if an ENFJ needs someone to uh, cover up for them in those areas without making them notice, an ENFP is actively seeking someone that will take care of those areas for them. So they're basically looking for someone that will help them relax, that will help them uh, take care of their house, that will also help them a little bit learn how to do that. So uh, basically, back to our ENFJ FE characteristic, they become whatever the situation requires them to be. They are awesome actors. Uh, Extra feeling also places others in front of themselves. So basically what they're going to be is uh, one of those types extremely focused on the other. So they're going to have their attention uh, completely oriented towards the other. They're going to do anything that makes the other person happy. The other person's happiness is going to be their main, their, their priority. Their top of, the top of their, of their agenda is going to be to do things for others. It may be uh, a social group, it may be a significant other, it may be family, it may be anybody that the ENFJ cares about. One misunderstanding about ENFJs is that this extra feeling thing means that they are good to anybody and everybody No, The ENFJ is a very us versus them mentality kind of type and that's because they, they have e extra feeling dominant and they have uh, extra sensing in a quite strong position. They are extra sensing tertiary. So uh, that means uh, that uh, they have a very strong us versus them mentality. So if in their book you are good, you're going to be accepted and embraced by the ENFJ and also protected by the ENFJ. If the ENFJ decides you are bad, you're going to be their worst enemy and they're going to try to destroy you in every possible way. Uh, <clears throat> another ENFJ characteristic is that they are 
introvert intuition auxiliary, which means that they're very strong at cause and effect. Uh, similar to NFJs, uh, they take people's uh, facial expressions and people's um, emotional expression and they uh, build on, on that uh, what uh, the person actually is or what the person is going through. Uh, the INFJ is more likely to use that awareness to find their own place in the world. The INFJ is um, an introvert, so introverts focus on finding their place in the world. Whereas the ENFJ is going to use that kind of knowledge to focus on um, the external environment. So basically they do that for the person. If the person needs help understanding themselves, the ENFJ is going to be the type that is going to be there for the person to help them understand themselves. They are not a, quite as precise as an INFJ in their uh, predictions and their use of introvert intuition, but they are anyway extremely precise. Uh, and these are the uh, main characteristics uh, of an ENFJ. An ENFP, on the other hand, has uh, the functions, the uh, first functions swapped. So an ENFP is going to be extroverted intuition. It means that they represent everything that is not there in the specific moment that, it, that is going on. They are the... Uh, we could and we and we and and we we could do that we could be there we could they are the we could type basically uh, along with entps they tend to be the we could type because they focus socially speaking also they are also focused on people but they focus on what could be uh, so they're going to be people that uh, tell you uh, the moment that you're behaving a specific way, an ENFP will come to you and will tell you, you could have done that instead of doing this. And they will probably not even in insert the second part. They will probably come to you and tell you something on the line of, you could have done that. Like if you, uh, if you are saying that uh, something, that a specific behavior does not resonate with you, uh, they will come to you and tell you probably this behavior was, will resonate with you and that's a behavior that is not taken into account because they have this ability to see everything that is not in that specific moment. They're also very likely to uh, try to help people understand themselves and fail big time because what they're actually good at is understanding possibilities. And they restrict those possibilities according to people's needs and to what they personally like and they personally consider right. So their auxiliary function is an introverted feeling. An introverted feeling is a self-oriented feeling function. So basically, if extroverted feeling is the altruistic function, is the function that thinks of others before of the self, ENFPs tend instead to be self-oriented. So basically, they move according to what makes them happy and what makes them feel fulfilled. So their personal emotions, their, their personal feelings, their personal well-being is always the focus of their feeling activity. Also, INF, uh, also uh, ENFPs and INFPs, ISFPs and ESFPs uh, tend to project their, their personal feelings onto others. So if the ENFP is uh, feeling frustrated for some reason, they're going to project that frustration onto people around them. Uh, so they're going to, for example, say, stop being so frustrated, you're irritating me to someone else when actually that person is being relaxed and that's because they have they they have this strong focus on their on their personal uh, feelings and their personal uh, internal emotional state that they tend to project it onto others so ENFJ is going to tell the person stop being so frustrated what is wrong with you and in that case uh, or 
no, 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 delete that. The ENFJ is probably likely going to say, I feel so frustrated. I feel so extremely frustrated when actually it's someone close to them being frustrated. Or they could say, you are so frustrated. What is wrong? What is going on? And they're going to say it with a very, very concerned facial expression because they actually feel the same way the other person is feeling. So the ENFJ will always and constantly have the feeling of projecting, whereas the ENFP is going to project uh, without having the feeling they're doing that. Uh, so basically, vice versa, they're going to tell someone that they feel a specific way, that this person feels a specific way, when instead it's them feeling that way. Um, this specific trait of introvert feeling versus extrovert feeling, I see in myself, my colleague. My colleague is an INTJ and I'm an INFJ, and it often happens that I look at him and go like, you look very nervous. And he says, absolutely not. I'm not nervous at all. Why are you telling me that I'm nervous? Who the hell told you that I'm nervous? <laughs> Which clearly <laughs> shows that he is nervous. I shouldn't do that because uh, INTJs are FE vulnerables. And I'm basically hurting him, but it slips out. It happens. So I usually try to make him feel better afterwards because it's something that slips out of me without thinking. Um... Whereas and when it's his turn, it's usually that I'm walking around the room and uh, doing something uh, or and I turn around and ask him a question and he starts going low, like, try to leave relax, try to leave relaxed. You are extremely nervous. You're making me anxious. When actually I'm being extremely relaxed, walking around the room and doing absolutely nothing. I'm emotionally relaxed. And that's him with his uh, tertiary introvert feeling, projecting uh, the feeling on me. Similar ENFPs and ESFPs have this tendency to project their emotional state onto others and believe that others are them. They're also, ENFPs are also pushed and pulled by their attraction and repulsion towards people. And this is another area in which the two types can look similar. Um, because the ENFP has this introvert feeling uh, creative. So they creatively decide if they like you or not, if they're attracted or repelled by you, or if they like or not that specific behavior, but that can change. It's not static. I, F, FI is a very static function. So if FI decide that that specific behavior if the FI type decides that they're repelled by that specific behavior, it's likely going to be like that forever. But when the function is in the creative position, in the auxiliary position, there is a margin of movement. So basically, there is a margin within which the ENFP is going to be changing that. So maybe it can happen to you that you met, meet the INFP one day and they tell you, I'm completely repelled by that attitude of uh, uh, pointing the finger against people. And two days later, you meet them again and they tell you, no, no, I'm not completely repelled. I only meant, uh, it's not that I'm repelled. I only meant that it's something negative to do. That's an ENFP or an ESFP, uh, but in our case, we're talking about an ENFP, so that's FI in the creative position. The, their attraction and repulsion towards things varies uh, according to how they feel in that specific moment. Again, introvert feeling is self-oriented. So according to how they feel in that specific moment, their emotional attitude, their, uh, emotion, their feelings towards things are going to vary and change. Um, another function that uh, uh, the two types uh, have in common is uh, the tertiary function versus the role function. These are socionics terms. So the role function is uh, the function opposite to uh, the dominant function. It means uh, that it works uh, in the same realm as the um, dominant function, but it has the opposite um, the opposite action. So let's say it that way. What I mean is that ENFJs are TE role function, uh, whereas ENFPs are SE role function. 
So as you can see, uh, the role function of, of an ENFP and the role function of uh, an ENF, ENFJ are the opposite functions, the opposite types, sorry, the other types, tertiary functions. So ENFJs are role function, are a TE role function, and ENFPs instead are TE tertiary. Uh, ENFPs are SE role function and ENFJ, uh, ENFJs are SE tertiary. What does it mean? It means that uh, uh, an ENFP is going to be aware uh, that uh, they're not very productive and they're not very active. Uh, they will want now and then to try to fix that, but that's not going to be their main focus. Their main focus is going to be on relaxation, on calm, on finding calm and relaxation, on finding balance uh, and comfort. That's going to be their main focus. Uh, and clearly, uh, their extra intuition dominant. So they're aware that they're not a very active personality. They're aware that they could be doing more, uh, but they do not really focus on that all that much. Uh, whereas uh, ENFJs uh, have a strong focus on beauty, they have a strong focus on uh, uh, action, and they want to be active, and they try to be active with all of their strengths. Uh, the tertiary function in socionics is to find the hidden agenda. So basically what an ENFJ wants to be, secretly wants to be, is actually sensing. So they're going to, to give a lot of activity uh, to becoming actually sensing. Whereas, in the, whereas ENFJs are extroverted thinking role function. It means that they often feel like they do not know enough. They feel incompetent. They feel uh, irrational. They feel like they do not have uh, this ability to, um, to use the, the, the outer world organizing rational function that is actually thinking. Uh, they also know that sometimes adhering to mob mentality uh, is um, necessary, which INFJs, for example, completely don't understand. Uh, but at the same time, it is almost impossible for the, ENF for the ENFJ to uh, adhere to this function and to actually apply this function in terms of mob mentality. They will probably understand that that's the situation in which mob mentality is applied, but when it comes to them applying that, they will probably become kind of allergic and pull back, rather not enter the situation than apply the function, especially if it goes against the, the needs and the goals of their primary function, extra feeling. On the other hand, uh, ENFPs are instead T tertiary. It means that their secret uh, hidden agenda is uh, uh, to be actually thinking. So they give a lot of activity into studying, researching. Uh, they usually have uh, extremely, uh, extremely defined and very, very narrow uh, realms of research in which they want to know everything. And they research, research, and research like crazy. ENFJs also do a lot of research, uh, but they also use a lot of their introvert intuition to work on things. Whereas uh, the ENFP is the kind of type that will learn things by heart. So an ENFP is probably going to to make a could make a video like this one, uh, repeating exactly what they read either in MBTI or in socionics, about that specific type. So they are, they, they, they learn, they literally learn. Remember, accurate thinking means the switching off your personal ideas and your personal opinions. So accurate thinking in the tertiary position means that in, uh, ENFPs are, have a, an encyclopedic knowledge, maybe, of things and not as much as an ENTJ or an ESTJ, uh, but they do have an extensive knowledge of things, but they do not form an opinion about those things. 
ENFJ also have difficulties forming an opinion, but they will have their own explanation of things. So they will take from stuff they've studied and they will mold it into something else using their intuition, applying it to reality. A little bit similar to an, INF, an INFJ. The difference with the INFJ is that the INFJ goes completely based on intuition. The INFJ doesn't read at all. The INFJ doesn't absolutely take um, what is extra, extra, thinking, so extra thinking, so raw knowledge, into account at all. So the difference between the INFJ and the ENFJ is that the ENFJ actually reads what is written out there and makes use of it. The INFJ is going to uh, blame someone else for their introverted intuition, basically. <laughs> so they're going to use uh, sources to justify their introverted intuition. Um, the ENFP instead, uh, encyclopedic or an attempt to reach encyclopedic knowledge about which they are extremely bitchy. Uh, if you try to tell uh, an ENFP that uh, they have their sources wrong or they misunderstood their sources, they're going to flip out big time because they're, you're basically destroying uh, their... Uh, their self-esteem in that moment, because our self-esteem is based on our tertiary function. So, this is what I have about the two types. Uh, I hope it helped uh, and it threw some light on the difference between ENFJ and ENFP. Once again, if, uh, someone, else, if someone out there thinks that they are an ENFJ, chances are they are not. Similar for ESFJs, uh, because they are also extra feeling, but ENFJs in particular, if you think you're an ENFJ, try to look at some other type, because you're likely not. Unless you're living around an, an ISTP 24-7, uh, and the ISTP needs an, an ENFJ, and therefore the ENFJ will mold themselves into being an ENFJ, unless you're living around an, 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 an ISTP, it's unlikely that an ENFJ is going to see their true type at the beginning of the journey uh, of self-typing. So this is what I have about a matter. I made it a little bit long. I hope you will have the patience to watch it, to watch it and I will talk to you soon. Bye.